Okay, pal. Who are you? Why are you following me? <laughs> Come on, you bum. Who told you to follow me? What do you know about the bracelet? I don't know nothing about a bracelet. I was just told to follow you and report to where you went. Why, I oughta... Who hired you? I was hired online. I'm told to report to a phone number and leave a message. Payment comes in cash in the mail. What do you mean, hired online? You know, the internet. You look too young to be a dinosaur. Uh, never mind that. Does the name Murphy mean anything to you? Never heard of him. Uh, I'll make you a deal. You stop following me, and I won't break your legs. Got it? Yeah, got it. Go on. Get out of here, you bum. Now I wonder who wants to keep an eye on me. If he's not connected to the bracelet, then what? I wonder if I'm getting closer to Ray's killer and don't even know it. Hmm. Hi, I'm Mike Patterson. About two years ago, I set about to fulfill a long-held dream, to make a movie. If things went according to plan, I would write a script based on the C.L. Gordon radio play Good Grief, It's Friday. I would then cast the film, shoot it, direct it, edit it, and other post-production aspects to it like sound design and color grading. My hope was to get distribution for the film. While I'm pleased to report that the film is being distributed through Film Hub and is available on Plex, Vimeo, and Amazon Prime Video. And it can be seen in 17 different countries. In this series, I invite you to come inside my movie. Over the coming episodes, I'll focus on influencers who have inspired me, instruction that has guided me, and the equipment and software that's made it possible to make this film. I'll also talk about the processes of casting, of working with actors, of securing locations, and uh, my dedicated crew. Good Grief It's Friday is the story of a private detective who tries to save his failing practice by retrieving a fabulously expensive diamond bracelet for a beautiful and wealthy client. At this point, I'd like to introduce Christopher Michael Clark. This fine actor took on the lead role of Philip Chandler. So I play Philip Chandler, who's kind of a washed up detective. Um, it, you, you find out pretty quickly that his wife has passed away mysteriously, and he's just kind of coasting for now, you know, living on whiskey and good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 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 Femme Fatale walks into his office and turns his life upside down. And, and Philip's got to figure out who he is and, and what's important to him and, and you know, basically remember uh, why he became a detective in the first place. And through the course of it, he meets some colorful characters and uh, some, you know, interesting people and interesting situations and has to kind of navigate his way through. Uh, until the bottom falls out at the end. And then when that happens, he's really got to decide, you know, you know, what's, what's important to him in his life. And I think uh, I really enjoyed Philip because, you know, uh, there's a lot that changes for him during the course of the film. And, and, you know, a lot of his character has to come out and, you know, and, but I think that his character really carries him through, the struggles and the difficulties that he has. And in the end, we see that, you know, he's, he's coming to terms with who he is and, and, you know, he, he might not be the best detective in the world. He might not be the best man, but he's, he's got uh, good intentions and he's got good people around him and, and he's going to carry on. And I like that about him. You know, when I was 22 years old, life was grand. I was working in the film department at the CBC and studying filmmaking at night at Ryerson with dreams of becoming a filmmaker. But that same time, we decided it was time to start a family, and I agreed. I haven't had a moment's regret since then. When it was time to return to the filmmaking dream, my typically supportive kids bought me a master class in screenwriting with David Mamet. What a wonderful program that is. One of the many things I took from that program was the importance of a reflection character for the protagonist. I'll let Chris introduce the scene where Philip first meets Sadie. Oh, so this is right at the beginning of the film. And basically, uh, as I drag my sorry ass out of my apartment to go, go to work and probably drink myself into the afternoon, 
I happen to see a homeless woman being accosted for something. And, and I think uh, Philip sees this happening and he knows he should do something, but it's like, this was not in my plan for today. But being who he is, he can't really walk away. And so Philip goes over and uh, kind of exerts his uh, meager authority over the little punk and, and happens just happens in that situation to meet one of the most important relationships in his life. And, and I think Sadie is kind of a reflection of, of Philip, you know, perhaps not outwardly, but you know, there's definitely a kindred spirit there. There's a similar situation. It's I, I like how the, the whole uh, uh, visual reflection of the trench coat, you know, Sadie's purple trench coat is a real like, tell for that kind of you know relationship that that these two develop quickly and I, and I think Philip is is pretty affectionate towards Sadie I think you know in a strange way not not in a pitying type of way but in you know this is a person who's fallen on hard times and you know maybe I don't you know I'm not sleeping in an alley yet but uh there's definitely a, a similarity to uh you know our, our life story. And, and I think Philip really uh, kind of really wants to kind of take care of Sadie. And it's interesting how like later in the film, Sadie has those same kind of, she wants to take care of Philip. It's just a real interesting, unique relationship. And I just, this, this whole into it, you know, discovering who each other is. And I think they're kind of both amused by each other. Yeah. Well, you're no cousin Vinny. Hey, Instead of insulting me, why don't you give me 20 bucks so I can go get a coffee? Isn't it a little early for that kind of coffee? Who asked you? I believe that was you. I won't give you money to buy booze, but I will take you to breakfast. I don't go to breakfast with just anybody. What about with someone who's willing to pay for it? Come on, the farmhouse is just up the street. Well, okay. But don't think some fabulous breakfast will get you to second base. Darling, I ain't even in the batter's box. What was that kid after, anyway? I guess he, uh, was looking for a jacket for the cooler weather. I just got it from this rich lady who was dropping things off at the Sally Ann. There's no way that asshole was gonna get it. Don't you have to pay for stuff, too? Not if you help them unload their cars. Did she also know you were helping yourself? Well, in the words of our protagonist, there you are, there you have it, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode, and if you have, please feel free to subscribe. In the meantime, I'll look forward to welcoming you to come inside my movie.